When looking for high yielding dividend stocks, one stock that jumps out to me is energy. But there are so many different types of energy companies, so I want to split them into different categories and select the best one in each category. First one I want to take a look at is pipelines. These company owns very long pipelines over thousands of miles and they will sign long term contracts to transport oil and gas through their pipelines and because of this they are able to generate consistent cash flow which can pay out to their investors. In Canada the two largest and most well known would be Inbridge and TransCanada. But we are also going to take a look at Pemina Pipelines, Inter Pipelines and Kira. First as a disclaimer I just want to say I am not a financial advisor so please do your own due diligence before investing. First off, I want to state the EPS is not based on their net income because pipeline companies tend to depreciate their assets over time because of the massive amount of money required to build and maintain their pipelines. Because of this, their net income is often lower than their cash flow. That's why we'll be looking at the amount the company can actually distribute to their shareholders instead. And of course, we'll be basing the payout ratio and the PE off this as well. One thing you might notice throughout is they all have a high dividend yield with a decent payout ratio as most pipeline companies would pay a decent chunk of their earnings back to investors. They also have a massive amount of debt as well since pipelines are not cheap to build and therefore they are required to borrow a lot of cash to fund the construction. So because of the high dividend yield, decent payout ratio and the consistent cash flow they make an attractive investment for dividend investors. Next up when you take a look at their 10-year performance, Inbridge has done the best and TransCanada the worst. But you have to remember to factor in their dividend as well. Since TransCanada usually pays back around 80% of their profits and Inbridge usually pays around 50-60% to back. Again when we take a look at annualized return we have to factor in their dividend as well. But overall we can see that within the last 5 years they all have performed poorly with the exception of Pemina Pipelines which has done decently. We can see them trending similar to each other over the years but I have to say Pemina Pipelines has done the best and usually trending near the top and TransCanada has been the most consistent. It's almost like a straight line. This is what I would normally expect from a stock that pays out almost all the profits back to investors as there's not much left to invest back into the company without taking on more debt which they already have a considerable size of. When we take a look at the revenue we clearly have a winner but overall we can see a trend upwards which is good but it's amazing to see how Inbridge has been able to grow the revenue over the years. But when we zoom in we can see a better picture of the other companies we can see that TransCanada has been steadily growing the revenue over the years. Pemina Pipeline started off very slowly and with very minor growth. But when they started making some bigger acquisitions, especially in 2012, they've been able to really grow the revenue. Again, with their yearly profits, we see the same trend, upwards. But Inbridge has really ramped up big. Even TransCanada and Pemina Pipelines has picked up the pace as well. One of the first things you'll notice when you take a look at their profit margin is that it's all over the place. You don't see a similar trend among them. But that's because their business isn't entirely the same. Because they transfer different kinds of products, some of them also generate energy and sell that as well. Some of them store natural gas as well for a fee. But overall, you can see the trend of each company's profit margins over the years. When it comes to dividends, the trend is exactly what I expect. Very consistent dividend growth over the years and no dividend cut. When we take a look at their dividend growth, we will notice a few things. Inter Pipeline and Kira has slowed down their dividend growth gradually over the recent several years. TransCanada and Pemina Pipelines has gradually been increasing dividend growth over the last couple of decades. We can see this very clearly in the chart. Even though Inbridge has slowed down the dividend growth recently, it's still amazing that they're growing it by over 10% every year. So out of these pipeline companies, which one do I like? I would prefer the three larger companies, Inbridge, TransCanada and Pemina Pipelines. But I do find the TransCanada's debt a little bit higher than I would like and also that the payout ratio is a bit high as well. But if the stock pulls back, I wouldn't mind owning a position in it. Inbridge and Pemina Pipelines are similar. I like the payout ratio and the dividend yield is very attractive. The performance is also similar. Both of them able to grow the revenues and profits by a lot over these years. But Inbridge is the largest company, which is a positive in my book. But Pemina Pipelines has less debt. Personally, I would choose both, but that's just my own opinion. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and share the video. It really helps out the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to smash the subscribe button. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.